The battle lines are drawn, and there's a grand battle coming to a star, soldier. Grab your Rotomex sub and your Pokeballs, for we're about to take the dive into the biggest battle in all of Astara. So the Great Barrier Reef in Australia is, well, was something of beauty, but due to a lot of factors, especially human involvement, it's seen better days. Off the coast of Queensland, the Barrier Reef certainly lives up to its name. 2,900 reefs and 900 islands, it could be its own region in itself. I had to squish it down a bit due to Astara being like a chibi version of Australia. The Kingdom Reef is its own area just off the coast next to Pennant, our bug gym. And has similar vibes of the Bug Bog Swamp. Go watch that vid if you haven't already, personally it's some of my favourite designs. Where it'd be like its own large dungeon, however unlike Bug Bog, which sits in between two important towns. The reef sits out on its own, begging and coaxing you to explore it. A mass of colour and beauty sitting just beneath the surface. But there would be a reason to go there, it's not just for the Pokemon. I like giving a pre-established visual for my areas, so for the Kingdom Reef, imagine the coral highlands from Monster Hunter World. That kind of giant, beautiful, colourful place. But the deep trenches and high areas are all steeped underwater, and you've been moving through it in the Rotomex sub. Also very reminiscent of something like Subnautica, the deeper you go, the more bioluminescent and horrifying it would be. Lots of Pokemon call this reef home, and the deeper you go as well, the more strange they would be. So let's structure this video like we're diving deeper and deeper into the reef. There would be all manner of Pokemon here of course, including Corsola and Marini. There'd be Magikarps and Mantines, Belusas, and I'd like to imagine Tatsugiri and Dondozo. And further down, maybe things like Chinchou and Deep Sea Pokemon. But of course, unlike Bug Bog, where everything was out to hurt you, the Pokemon here aren't as interested in you, but are deeply ingrained in a battle for the reef. The centers on two Pokemon lines have been explored in a much darker sense in Galar, Marini and Corsola. Obviously a video about a reef would include these two, especially seeing as the Crown of Thorns starfish, Marini's main inspiration, is also a big coral muncher. So in Astara, the Marini and Toxapex are trying to devour this reef, but here the Corsola won't let them, and are gonna fight back, as well as other Pokemon who call this place home. Meanwhile, here's you running through this place, finding special coral in different areas. These are kind of extra replacements for evolution stones if needed, and some Pokemon here need it to evolve. Also, these samples you could find could be used to grow these corals on your farm. Alright, enough faffing about, let's look at our star first. They hang around all levels of the Kingdom Reef. So with Corsola being our coral Pokemon, and being an unbleached version, unlike Galarian and Cursola, I wanted to give it a new Evo, something really fun and all I could think in my head was Centaur Corsola. We need more Centaurs in Pokemon, cause right now we have Brute Bonnet and Regibrak, and one of those aren't real. But Corsola is like a squat Centaur, and I wanted more Corsola so I extended it out into this the horse shape and gave it this almost Centurion helmet look to its head. I was inspired by the Staghorn Coral for this one, and I think it would be this awesome majestic underwater Pokemon, almost deer hopping through the water. A bit controversial, but I changed this type to Water Fairy due to its almost fantasy feel. But to counteract this now glaring weakness to poison, I gave it a new ability that would make it the perfect infantry and cavalry in the battle against the Toxic Menace. I gave it darker Corsola colors as it feels like a more mature version. Corsolja, the Coral Cavalry Pokemon, a water and fairy type. Protecting the Astaran Reef from the coral devouring Marini and Toxapex stands the proud Corsolja, one of the first lines of defense. Their bodies are hardened to protect against the sharp teeth of their predators, but even more so for causing powerful bludgeoning attacks and ramming damage. As Corsolja age, they make pilgrimages to further parts of the reef, where when they finally pass on, their bodies become part of the new reef. Corsolja's abilities are Coral Body and Guts. Coral Body powers up Rock type moves, gives an immunity to Poison type moves as well as Poison and Toxic. While the next line starts out as a conscientious objector, they evolve into the Hero of the Sea. The first stage is a certified cutie. Everyone loves dugongs, right? Not that one, get out of here. An actual dugong, those big floating sea cows. 
I want this very sweet, cute, passive Pokemon with a big pool floaty ring where its arms come from, like a cute little baby with water wings. It'd float around the reef with its Evos, and if its Evos attacked you, it'd be like a powerful encounter if you tried to battle or catch Manatini. It isn't a complex design, but I think the simplicity works really well for this bubba. Manatini, the calf Pokemon, a water type. Small and sweet, it's hard to find a Manatini alone. Usually they're being protected by their stronger evolutions as they travel the currents of Astara's Reef. It has an organ shaped like a ring around its body where their fins came out of. This organ can be inflated or deflated for quickly rising to the surface of the water. Because of the strength of the ring, it can also be inflated to protect against predators or the rocky coral environment. Although looking quite defenseless, they have quite a formidable headbutt due to their weight. Although Manatini would rather run in most situations. Manatini's abilities are Thick Fat and Cud Chew. While still not yet a true fighter, Manatini's first Evo looks a little more competent at battle and their water wings, or flippers as some scientist types want to call them, are longer and more powerful. This is a mix of a sort of dugong and sea lion, although still not breaking the theme as far as what Seal's Evo does. It still has this sort of non-plus look to it though, and so it hasn't gained a dual type yet. Colors have kept them pretty much exactly the same as Manatini. I don't think I'd want to change its scheme at all. It perfectly exemplifies what it is. Pugonist. The Dugong Pokemon. A water type. Evolves from Manatini at level 21. Pugonists mainly spend their time tending to their young. They're passive Pokemon unless something tries to attack them or their pod. Pugonist in battle are swift and powerful fighters who can inflate their fins into large powerful bludgeons. He loves to eat sea grass and will almost always be seen chewing mindlessly on it, even during a fight. If you're training a Pugonist, make sure to keep some sea grass on hand to keep them happy and attentive. Pugonist's abilities are thick fat and cud chew. The final Evo, I really want to play up the strongman vibe. While not inherently Australian, it doesn't need to be. But this is just a bigger, buffer version of this pre-Evo. I couldn't decide whether or not to give it tusks that sort of came out of its mustache. But I decided against it, as it didn't really fit the dugong aesthetic. The hair gives it sort of a Superman look, and with the chest pattern making abs. It definitely has this feeling of being an opposite to Palafin. I'm just going to make a Justice League of Water animals at this point. It gains a fighting type now after being given a certain coral and it's got that flex going, he's got some anchor arms. Do Strong, the Dugong Pokemon, a water and fighting type. It evolves from Pugonus after feeding it a deep orange coral. The deep orange feeding grounds are protected by Do Strong and is considered a safe haven for many water type Pokemon who call the coral reef home. Dewstrung are stalwart protectors of the weak. They will inflate the ring organ, then push it into their hands, making a giant powerful fist, capable of knocking out even a whale lord. They even use it for powerful jet punches similar to that of Palafin. On land, Dewstrung is a little more awkward, but nothing will stop it from delivering justice. Dewstrung's abilities are thick fat and cud chew. So these are sort of the first area of creatures you'd be able to see without going deep in the trenches of the Kingdom Reef. But now let's go lower. A little lower. 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 A lot lower. Too low! Lower. These next two aren't water type at all. Kind of fun deciding fish by without having the water type in mind. You ever heard of a stonefish? I'm definitely afraid of these things. Literally some of the most dangerous fish in the world. And they look like this. Highly venomous spines, and you can just step on them, I hate it. But I want to slot this in as a single stage Pokemon, something akin to a surprise encounter that you could maybe bump into if you were skirting the floors of the mid areas of the reef. My idea was rather simple, a venomous fish that also had a sort of nastiness of rust on them. Very jagged with a buzzsaw fin, feeling a bit like a pile of rusty metal. A walking pile of tetanus. 
that will require a tetanus shot. The textures of stonefish kind of gave me the idea for the theme and having small parts of the jaw kind of rusted off definitely makes it look rougher. I think we need an actual poison steel rust Pokemon, it'd be really interesting, especially if it had a steel type move that was super effective against other steel types. Sinoxide, the stonefish Pokemon, a steel and poison type. Walking through the Astaran sand can be especially deadly due to Sinoxide. Incredibly powerful toxins leak from it constantly. Its body contains a rust that does not affect it, but it hunts down steel type Pokemon in and around the water and infects them with it. It slowly breaks down the body till it's ready for Sinoxide to eat. For any non steel type, Sinoxide is jagged and venomous enough to seriously injure you, if not cause fatalities. The rubber-like rings on the Manatini family are strong enough to block the sharpness and toxins, proving them great for dealing with Sinoxide. Sinoxide's abilities are Corrosion and Merciless. So next to two Pokemon, it's got sort of that oin cologne thing going on where the male and female are varied, but instead of different stats or abilities, the typings are different. See, Clownfish, if you haven't seen Fighting Nemo, have a relationship where each of them benefit in some way with an enemy. And I wanted to show this in the Pokemon. Of course, it had to be clown themed, and who doesn't love clown girls? So the male is Psychic Poison, like Sloking, where the anemone's toxins have leaked into the head, unlocking its third eye, while the female is Water Poison, using the anemone as an anchor for it to launch powerful attacks without suffering recoil. And I imagine the female one being able to hide inside of it as I feel the male more on kind of generic clowns and their funny hair, while the female was based more on jack-in-the-boxes. I still don't know if I want the dots to be the eyes or the cheeks being sneaky eyes. Either way, they both gain the poison type from the anemone, as they protect against Synoxide's poisonous ways. Clonemhihi, the clownfish Pokemon. Clonemhihi are a symbiotic relationship, very similar to Slowbro. Male and female Clonemhihi seem to have different attachment methods for the poisonous organisms they work with. Male Clonemhihi have powerful toxins seeping into their brain, unlocking strange power between the two. If the psychic energy doesn't get its opponent, the toxic tendrils will. Female Clonemhihi attach to rocks and other surfaces temporarily to launch powerful blasts of pressurized water and poison without fear of being sent flying back from the recoil. Both the male and female versions of Clonemihi have the new ability Chameleon, which lowers a foe's special attack stat upon switching this Pokemon in. So now we go deep, like so dark we have to use the Rotomex lights to see deep. But wait, what are those bright lights in the distance? They're oddly transfixing. So of course, what's a Pokemon of the Reef video without a Beast Paradox to grace our vision? This one is actually based on the whale shark, these giant hoover looking sharks that already look like real life ultra beasts. But I mean, whale and shark got me thinking, what Pokemon could it be? And I think a Pokemon well deserving of being a water whale now is Satitan. I've fallen in love with Satitan's design and its cry shivers me to the bone. So you can imagine how haunting a pitch shifted down version of it in a deep sea would be if only the strange light emanating from it be like a beacon for you. Probably another strong encounter. You wouldn't want to mess with early. Fun fact about Satitan, originally Astara was going to have a Water Whale legendary as a box legend, Setter Lord. And in this beast form, it was actually going to look similar to this. The tail was inspired by the spout of Setter Lord. I wanted it to be this starry looking Pokemon, flatter than Satitan, with the mouth being the focal point, for knowing that's where it's probably the most dangerous. I converted the spot patterns on normal Satitan to these extra eyes. It could use to see underneath it as well. Perspective was tricky with this one, and you can see I had to change and shift it around a bit. But I think it truly came into its own once I added the colours and stars. Satitan, Beast Paradox form, the Whale Shark Pokemon, a water and psychic type. Slowly making its way through the Astaran waters is this form of Satitan. Unlike the Paldean form, this one seems to be built for swimming through deep water. It has adapted a taste for Isocryl and even Crilamity, which it simply seems to have to suck in a mass amount of water, and they are sucked in. 
It seems to have a strange power which allows it to control the currents of water. This has led to some changes in the Astaran Sea. However, unless it's sucked in, it isn't too much of a threat. Free Star Classification It has a new ability called Relaxed, which heals the Pokemon at the end of its turn if it takes no damage. This Pokemon would show up on most floors, but is rarer, much easier to find at the bottom of the trenches. Did you know that this creature that just loves to munch on Crown of Thorns starfish? Meet the giant Triton, a big old silly snail who just loves eating those starfish. So, of course I had to create the ultimate fighter in the battle on the Coral Eaters. I wanted this sort of commander general looking snail who had this shell, almost like a tank with a cannon on the front. I thought it'd be funny to have this sort of Sid from Final Fantasy holding the toothpick in his mouth, but instead it was a Toxapex form. It makes him look silly, but also kind of too cool. This thing would be massive, moving slowly, but made to fire giant blasts of sand at their poison enemies. Typing was sort of hard for me, I almost made it poison, but then its abilities would make no sense, so I just settled on pure ground type. It's dangerous to Marini and Toxapex, but it still is a little vulnerable to the water attacks. Bombartillon, the Triton Pokemon, a ground type. If Kosolja are the cavalry in the Battle of the Reef, Bombartillon are the artillery, using their natural immunity to poison and their powerful shell cannons to keep predators at bay. Bombatalon are some of the only Pokemon that are actually predators to Marini and Toxapex, using a special sand cannon attack to weaken them enough to devour them. Its sheer size and weight mean that not many Pokemon actively hunt Bombatalon, but their natural weakness to water types mean that when they are older and frail, many water types can quickly dispatch them for a quick meal. Bombatalon has two abilities, Poison Heal and a new ability called Poison Loader, which boosts special attack while poisoned instead of taking damage, and increases special attack when hit by poison attacks. So we have our cavalry and our guardsmen and our artillery. It's truly a grand scale battle for the reef. I imagine there'd be a lot of infighting between Pokemon here while in the overworld, but it'd still be a beautiful area to explore. Probably some fun exploration missions that'd be given as well. But what do you think of the Kingdom Reef and the Pokemon that call it home? Comment down below your thoughts and if any of these Pokemon would be going on your team. And don't forget to chuck a like and sub if you enjoy my content. Next video, I'm up for suggestions. More type swaps, should I continue on with giving pre-evos to the other type swaps? A fusion video? Maybe something else? But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I was a wimp before Anchor Arms! Now I'm a jerk and everybody loves me! <laughs> <laughs>